Thank you. Madam Secretary, please conduct the roll call. Banks? Here. Collins? Present. Simmons? Present. Tamayo? Here. Reyes? Here. Guy? Akil? Here. Blair? Here. And Ingandela? Here. Let the record show all members of the Citizen Review Board are present with the exception of our Vice Chair, Ms. Irene Guy. At this time, I will ask uh, Dr. Carolyn Collins uh, to sit in for our Vice Chair and continue with the meeting guideline. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, I will read those guidelines. Please silent all electronic devices. The duties and responsibilities of the Citizen Review Board are to, one, review complete department investigation involving the use of force and cases of importance and interest to the community or the city. Uh, number two, to determine whether the disposition of the reviewed cases was consistent with the department policies and procedures. Number three, review matters of importance or interest and make recommendations regarding the handling of these matters. Number four, determine whether any revision or addition to department policies and procedures are appropriate in reviewing matters of or importance or interest. And number five, report the findings and recommendations to the mayor and the chief of police. Uh, cases that are brought before the Citizen Review Board are closed internal affairs cases that have been investigated and brought to the police chief for disposition. It is the Citizen Review Board's job to review the cases and to render an opinion as to whether the investigation was done according with the department policies and procedures. The Citizen Review members are provided the investigative files in advance of the meeting. The Citizen Review Board will hear from the department whenever matters of interest of importance are requested for review by the board or the department. As will be further discussed by the chair, members of the public will have an opportunity to address the Citizen Review Board during the public comment portions of this meeting. The coordinator for the board is Captain Kevin Schoolmaster. Any person who wishes to make a complaint concerning a matter which may be considered by the Professional Standards Bureau should see a Captain Schoolmaster for information on how to file a complaint. And I hope I did Captain's name right. The chair is responsible for maintaining an appropriate business-like decorum during this meeting. The board should not discuss matters where the citizen or the departments may likely be a party in litigation. And finally, the public comment portion of the meeting is coming up early on the agenda. So if you wish to speak, Please line up at the kiosk now so that you can uh, be added to the agenda as you wish to speak. Uh, line up at that kiosk so you can be called in order. Please maintain social distancing and wear your mask. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dr. Collins. You're welcome. We'll now move on to item D, approval of the minutes from the meeting of June 22nd, 2021. Are there any questions or provisions? Chair, that was July. Oh, excuse me, July. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Swint. Are there any questions or provisions? Hearing none, I will need a motion and a second to approve the minutes. So move. Board member Reverend Banks have made a motion to approve uh, the minutes, and Devon Engadella has seconded the motion. Was that, was, was that the okay? Uh, Jeff Blair has seconded the motion approval of the minutes. Any further discussion, uh, Mr. Chair? I, I'll, I'll uh, recuse myself from voting since I was not here last week, uh, last month. Thank you, Mr. Tamayo. We will now continue with the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion passes. Thank you. Next on the agenda is item E, public comment. Are there any participants signed in for the public comment portion of this agenda? Chair, if we can go uh, downstairs, I do believe there was one person downstairs. Okay, we will wait briefly for that participant.
Greetings, if you will, state your name and address for the record, and please limit your comment to three minutes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Three minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, I can't really hear you very well. Um, <clears throat> my uh, name is Sandra Zickery. My address is 11718 Rain Tree Lake Lane, Apartment A, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Um, tonight, I would like to play an audio from a body cam footage and then address two issues with the Tampa police. First and foremost, I do not see it appropriate to have three cops gang on me like that. My issue, uh, my issue is that these these cops, specifically the detectives on the case and all whom is involved, is in the wrong for a whole year. They <coughs> threw statute of limitations in my face and denied that there was discovery rules, which essentially means. The statute of limitations is told if a crime is concealed or discovered at a later time. Last month, Internal Affairs confirmed in email writing that they're aware that there is delayed discovery rules. My second issue is that for a whole year, the Tampa police denied that the consent forms are forged and then tried to accuse me of it. Now that there is proof that it is indeed forged and verified by an expert, Internal Affairs claim that they're wanting to help me and review the reports, yet I still see no progress or no, or no word. As previously mentioned, one of the cops told me that my baby may have needed the overdose. I, I take that as an, assault, as an insult. She's not a doctor. Obstetrician anesthesia states that the standard dosage is three to five millimeters, nothing greater. And secondly, prior to the placement of the epidural, there was a diagnosis of decelerations in the baby's heart rate, which essentially means that there was fetal distress and abnormal weak heart rate. In medical literature, doctors are required to know when it is safe to give medicine and look at the risk factors. Giving an epidural while there's fetal distress is not highly, is, 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 is highly, highly not recommended. Because again, it contains a narcotic, and narcotics are known to slow down the heart rate. In medical records, you see numerous counts that have refused induction, yet the hospital still does it, despite of my refusal uh, and the fact that my water already broke and there's no need. They left me in pain and was unsuccessful. Yes, if, if you will, if you can draw to a conclusion, uh, I'd yes. be greatly appreciated. Thank you. According to research, that could be sexual assault because there is a case where a woman stated she did not want to be cut during labor, and the doctor still proceeds doing so, cutting her 12 times. She won the case on account of battery and sexual assault. We women, we have rights and real religious reasoning. I may be alone, but I have an army of angels behind me. <laughs> and a world that loves me and supports me and is watching my every move. You're failing as a community. I'm done. Thank you. Are there any other participants uh, for the public comment portion of this agenda? I would now ask if the clerk received any written comments. No written comments. I will now ask whether we received any recorded uh, comments for this agenda. Chair, we checked the uh, recorded voice message and there was no comments. Thank you, that concludes the public comment portion of our meeting. Uh, tonight, we have uh, Chief Dugan and Assistant Chief uh, Delegato and City Attorney Gina Grimes uh, present. I will move to item H on the agenda to CRB staff reports and request if Chief Dugan 
and Assistant Chief Delegado to please come forward to address any comments you wish to make to the board. Welcome. Good evening, Brian Dugan, Chief of Police. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. Uh, if you're not aware of it, I have announced my retirement from my role as Chief of Police effective September 10th, and I felt obligated to come here and talk to everybody tonight. You have all been under quite the microscope, just like the police department has. And I have always said uh, that you have a tremendous responsibility and you're doing this, you're volunteering your own time. And it means much more than what any of you probably realize, that you are doing a tremendous service to the citizens and also to our police officers. It's important that a second set of eyes look at things, so to speak. I think you all realize um, just how difficult it is to be a police officer, and hopefully you've seen just how difficult it is to be the chief of police. Uh, we have to make uh, difficult decisions. As the leader of the department, I've had to make some difficult decisions. People don't always agree with the discipline they don't always agree with the findings. They don't agree whether the discipline was hard enough or too light or whatever, and it's, it's just not that simple. And I always say the hardest thing about being the chief of police of the three things is the budget, where are we gonna spend our money, how we're gonna spend it. Two, your personnel decisions, who you're gonna promote, where you're gonna assign them. And three is discipline. You know, uh, I know I'm gonna sound old, but. The oldest guy at 31 years and four years as chief, I am the senior person at the police department and I look at these police officers quite often like my kids. And when you discipline your kids and they own their mistakes, you usually have a tendency to go a little bit lighter on them when they own their mistakes. And when they don't own their mistakes, you tend to be a little heavier on them. And that's difficult to do. And then you have all seen, as you read these cases and ask questions, it's just not easy. It's not easy to deal a lot of discipline. It's not easy to be a police officer. So I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you for what you do. Uh, it's an important role. And I think sometimes I feel like you all, and I'm the only one that remembers that you're volunteering your time here. And, and I just, it bothers me some of the criticism you guys have taken as a board when you're just doing the best you can and you're just giving back to your community and you play a valuable role in the system. And so that was all I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm officially done September 10th and then Chief Delgado will be the, the interim chief and the mayor will move forward from there. Well, th thank you, uh, Chief Duke, and, and it's, it's, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you uh, through the years. And yes, we have shared some, some rough roads and uh, I like to believe that we, we learned a lot under your leadership and uh, definitely going to be uh, greatly missed. Uh, one who has a, a heart for the city and a heart for its citizens as well. So I definitely wish you well in any future endeavors that you may uh, take on in the future as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you for your service. Thank you. Chief, thank you very, very much for your service and uh, uh, your honesty and frankness throughout it all have been very much appreciated. Thank you. I, I'm not sure everybody appreciates it, but thank you. <laughs> Chief, I want to thank you as well. I, I like something that you've always said when I was in the uh, public presence with you. You always said we don't always agree, but we work together. And we certainly have done that. And I think we've done it well on behalf of the citizens. Uh, we uh, wish you well, uh, much success as you leave us. And thank you so much for the uh, work that you've done with the board and you've come when we've called and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Likewise, Chief, let me express my profound gratitude for your commitment to this community and the work that you've done. And we look forward to seeing you do some other things in your new life that will be impactful to the community as well. Thank God you. speak to you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate everything you've done, Chief. I hope you get to do something fun <laughs> <laughs> and less stressful and retiring. Uh, but no, as Dr. Carlin said, you know, what I most appreciate is Whenever we've had questions or we've asked you to come, you've been willing to do that, and we hope to have that same working relationship with the next team. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Chief, if it was easy, everybody could do it. That's true. That's true. So uh, as, a, as an Army veteran, salute you. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening. I won't take too much of your time. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Ruben Delgado, the assistant chief. And like Chief Dugan said, um, when he leaves September 10th, I'll be the interim chief moving forward until the mayor decides how the permanent solution will be. So um, I just want to echo what, what the chief's been saying. I, I want to thank all of you all for taking the time out of your all schedule to volunteer for this board. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important board for us. Um, I know it's, it's been a difficult road here the last few months, and we, I think we've finally gotten to a, a place now where we can move forward um, and kind of advance and work together on getting this department better, making it better for the citizens of the city, and I look forward to being part of that with each and every one of you all. I'll leave my business cards here for my contact information so you all have it. Um, I just want to touch on a couple things that, um, you know, I've picked Chief Dugan's brain here for the last two years, uh, and uh, anticipating that at some point he was going to be retiring, um, and it's big shoes to fill. I think you've seen some of the things that he's been through over the last few years, um, and it's, it's been a pleasure to work by his side and, and through those times. And they haven't been the easiest times at all, and, and you guys are well aware of that, but I think what you saw uh, was real. I think everything that he did at the staff table, I will tell you, I sat next to him, was for the betterment of the department and for the betterment of the officers. And, and that, that, that goes unseen a lot. That doesn't, that doesn't come out in the public a lot, but I can assure you that there was some agonizing, even when it came to discipline, it was always what's going to make the department a better department. Um, so I tend to follow those, plan on following those, those guidance. Um, I learned a lot from them. I look forward to working with each and every one of you all as well. Um, so me and Chief Dugan talked about a few things. I know you guys will be doing some workshops in the future. Uh, one of the things I'd like to see is, is get some, a workshop on our discipline process on how that happens, like from, from the beginning of when a complaint comes in and how internal affairs goes through the process, how it ends up in a district for investigation or the writing up of the letter that you guys read, and then again, how we decide on discipline. So I think there's a lot there that maybe could fill the gaps on some of the questions that you guys may have on the process of our discipline that I think a workshop could help clarify some of that mm -hmm. for you. Another thing um, that I, th I like to do is the captain that authors those discipline letters that you guys read, those, those um, uh, is have them come the month that you guys are reviewing a case. Uh, so the captain that authors that letter is here to help captain school meters with any questions or anything that comes up in that case. Because sometimes we put captain school meters in a position where he's not involved in the actual investigation. Uh, and he, he, he just having the captain here that wrote it may be a little bit easier um, to get some clarifying questions if you had it. So, uh, And then the, the last thing I want to do is kind of get this board a little more inclusive with the, with the agency. When I, when I say I think there's opportunities to maybe bring you guys in or invite you into some of our processes, even if it's an award ceremony or even if it's a promotional ceremony, just so you can see the culture of the agency, kind of see the inner workings of our agency, and kind of help you get a better understanding of how, as a whole, the agency's operating. So those are the three things, and I'm sure I'll be in touch with each and every one of you all in the future. I just wanted to take a few seconds to introduce myself, and I look forward to working with all of you all. Sorry about that. No, I got you. No worries. <laughs> Likewise. And those, those are, are definitely some, some great ideas moving forward, and uh, I, I look forward to working with you in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Chief Delegato. I will now ask uh, City Attorney uh, Gina Grimes uh, to come forward and address orientation and training. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. I'm Gina Grimes, the City Attorney. This is my first time appearing in front of you, although I've never met most of you. Um, I, I feel like I have because I've been working for the last year and a half on the Citizens Review Board Ordinance. And I worked alongside Ursula Richardson, who's our Chief Assistant City Attorney. And uh, I'm sure, as, as you all know, there was a, a, a lot of work, a lot of discussions, a lot of debate that went into drafting that ordinance. Um, there are a lot of changes to the ordinance. Um, some of them include the number of members that are on your board. We're adding two members. Your meetings are, are, are um, being changed. Some of them are going to be held outside of uh, these chambers. Um, you have different reporting requirements. You have a survey requirement. Um, there's also changes to your powers and authority. 
you're now going to be involved in the um, hiring uh, policies of the police department, and one of you will sit on the interview panel of the, of the new recruits. Um, there are some other changes dealing with tracking complaints, um, expanding your powers on your ability to uh, review internal affairs investigations that are closed, and then also you have the, uh, the broad discretion to review matters of, of importance. So it's a lot of information, and that's why I wanted to come and speak to you today about orientation and training. We want you to feel comfortable in knowing what that ordinance says and then break it down into its different component parts. Um, part of what we wanted to do was to get feedback from you all here tonight about how you wanted to do that. Did you want to spread it over two meetings or maybe three meetings? Either way, um, we can accommodate that. The other thing I wanted to um, update you about was the new members. Um, there were two new members added to the board. Actually, you had two alternates that those positions had never been filled. And I apologize for having my back to you, sir. Um, one of those um, appointments, it was decided by the new ordinance, um, it would be an individual that's nominated by the NAACP, recommended by the mayor, and then confirmed by city council. That second additional member would, will be someone who is selected by city council and, 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 and uh, appointed by city council. So that first member, the one that's nominated by the NAACP and recommended by the mayor, that um, recommendation is going to be on city council's agenda this Thursday. And that individual is Robert Urban. <clears throat> so um, we're assuming all things are go on that one and that appointment will move forward. The second appointment is to be done by city council. Um, we have asked them to accelerate that appointment and, and, and to actually make it completed in September. And the reason for that is back to your orientation and training schedule. We would like for those two new members to have the benefit of the orientation and the training that we're going to go through with the new ordinance. So if they could uh, start attending the meetings in September, if they'd have September, October, and then if you want to take it to a third training meeting or orientation meeting in December, we can accommodate that as well. So those are things that we will um, discuss with you in just a few minutes, and I'll, I'll explain how we intend to do that. Um, I, I know that you have been working with Mike Schmidt, who's been the attorney. He's our police legal advisor, and he's internal to the police department. One of the things that um, the city council and, and even the mayor um, was uh, stressed during the, the review of the, uh, of the ordinance was the need to make this board more independent, if you will, from the police department. Up to this point, the police department has been like your staff. They've, the one, they've been the ones that help you with your cases, help with the agenda, um, basically um, lead you through the agenda. Um, I'm not sure, if, I, I think the clerk's office actually takes the minutes. Um, <clears throat> what we wanna do with the assignment of an attorney, a different attorney, is to give you some level of independence from the police department. Mike is and will be continuing on in his role um, over at the police department as the police legal advisor, but he will be in going forward more in a capacity of just assisting the police department in their presentation of the cases. You'd previously met one of our other assistant city attorneys, Carl Brody, who's here tonight, and he was transitioning in taking over the role as the board attorney for the uh, Citizens Review Board. However, we've had to um, ask Carl to take some other assignments that, that um, support more his expertise in contracts and HR. And so I thought it would be too much for him to also um, have to attend these board meetings. So as a substitute, who I think you'll be very pleased with, I have with me tonight Kamaria Pettis-Mackle. Kamaria is an attorney in our office, and the, thing, the reason I selected Kamaria of the 20 or so attorneys that we have is because she has a lot of experience representing boards. She represents various different uh, city boards, the Variance Review Board, the Historic Preservation Board, the Barrio Latino Commission. She appears in front of city council. She's very familiar with boards, rules of procedure, knowing what the authority of the board is pursuant to code. Those are questions that come up quite often in the boards that she represents. And that's the kind of 
I think, expertise that would benefit you all the most going into this new role with expanded powers. You're going to need to have someone that's familiar with your code and knows what you can and can't do. And then again, the other, the other um, reason we want to have someone separate from the police department is, you know, we appreciate everything that Mike has done, but we want to give you that level of independence from the police department, someone you can call and ask questions of without feeling like you may feel the police department has done a lot and you don't want to, you know, imply that anything, you're questioning anything they've done. So this will give you that outlet and um, she will be the one that sits with you and, um, had, she already has some suggestions. She's very organized. She already has a checklist of everything she needs to review and go over with you. She and Mike have ideas about the training schedule and how to present it to you. Uh, she'll work with you on your agenda. She believes that she should have uh, pre-hearing or pre-meeting um, counseling sessions with anyone. Like oftentimes we'll brief the council members before a meeting. If they have questions about items that are on the agenda, they can ask questions offline. Um, she'll also uh, be able to um, answer any other questions that you might have about your powers and authority. So she also wants to convey, and I'll let her come up here and speak for herself, that we're open to whatever ideas or requests that you all have because, you know, you're the ones that are putting in your time as volunteers and we all do appreciate that. Um, we also attend a lot of the night meetings. We know you know, that you're grinding it out here sometimes at night and it's hard after you've worked all day. So we, we understand where you're coming from. We appreciate what you do, just like Chief Dugan and, and Chief Delgado said. Um, we do appreciate the fact that, that you're volunteering your time to do this. So we want to help you in any way that we can. And I'll turn it over to um, Kamaria. And um, the other thing I, I want to mention too is Carl was more than willing to, to pick up this assignment and and carry it forward and I appreciate all that he's done and the, and the, and the benefit that we'll get from his three, year, three months of um, coming to these meetings of, is if we'll have you know, cross training and if anyone's not available for a meeting, we'll have a backup with Carl. So this is Kamaria pettis Mackles. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grimes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, as Ms. Grimes stated, my name is Kamaria pettis Mackle. I'm an assistant city attorney with the city attorney's office. Um, I have uh, a number of ideas moving forward to um, help um, implement the new procedures based on the ordinance that was just recently passed. Um, obviously, your rules and procedures need to be updated, um, but as Ms. Grimes stated, some of the ideas that I have are setting up standing meetings with the board members if necessary, especially um, Mr. Chair before um, each meeting. Um, to also um, organize the training schedule so that all the board members are familiar with the ordinance changes um, that you guys have to, as a board, be familiar with. Um, so, but most importantly today, standing here, I would like to have open up the floor to have any suggestions from the board on what I could do to be of service to the board. How do you spell your name? Sorry, it's a long one. <laughs> um, my first name is C-A-M-A-R-I-A, -A -A, and my last name is hyphenated. It's Pettis, P-E-T-T-I-S, hyphen M-A-C-K-L-E. And after the meeting, I'll ensure that I email all of you um, so that you'll have my contact information. I apologize, I don't, didn't bring my business cards with me, but I'll make sure to email you so that you'll have my contact information but I'm open to any ideas or suggestions on how I could be of service for you as a board. Well, not, not speaking for the entire board, but it, it, is, it appears that you have a lot of knowledge in your field and I, I'm eager to you know, sponge up what knowledge you have uh, to ensure that we're moving in the right direction and, and the structure is there and everyone's familiar with the new ordinance as well. I think we could open up in reference to the discussion on uh, how do we want to break up these uh, next few sections, uh, especially with the uh, holiday season coming up as well, uh, with either over two months or over the three month uh, time frame? That's something we can also open up for discussion. Yes, um, I spoke with Mr. Schmidt about the, um, the topics that we have to go over. Um, it depends on how long you want the board wants to break up the, the training session, whether you want to have a long a session during one meeting, do you want to break it up in two meetings or spread it out in three meetings? Can we do it as a workshop? If that's the pleasure of the board. 
And may I ask the estimated time frame? Are we looking at two hours, three hours, four hours? <laughs> Some of the topics that um, we need to go over can be relatively quick. Um, one of the topics you is on the agenda today as far as um, the interview panel. So that item will already be taken care of. So it could, it could be, it depends on the topic and obviously the discussion that follows the topic. So it's hard to say, but it could be done in relative like, you know, two or three hours probably. But again, the discussion will probably drive truly how long the workshop will be. If we could replace our cases with part of the discussion here initially, and if the, let's see, if the, the city council is going to have the appointment by September and we start in October, and I know if we look at the timing for October, well, I'll say November, December, because we usually sometimes take the holiday off because of the the importance of this, not taking the holidays off, if we spread it out over three months, that maybe we could just set aside time like we're doing tonight and say that we'll have, and that will give the September time to get the two new board members alternate on board, and then we could do the training, just a, you know, a thought process for the following three months. Okay. I, 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 I support that um, notion. I think that that's a lot of information to digest at one meeting. So to the extent we can break it up into subject areas and do it over three meetings would be great. Also, um, we were, you know, we could do it in two meetings. In December, I believe Chief Delgado has scheduled the Citizens Police Academy to be held again. I think it was, um, I think it was deferred during COVID. And so some of you, I think some of you have already attended and some of you have not and the new members I don't believe have either. So we wanted to leave some time in December for you to have an opportunity, for those of you that need to have an opportunity to attend the uh, police academy. So trying not to load you up too much, but I, I'm a fan of spreading things out so that you could get into more detail as opposed to too much information all at once. But it's, a, it's entirely up to you all how you wanna to do it. Once you give us that direction tonight, whether it's two meetings or three meetings, then we can divide the subject area up that way. Kamaria will send you some books in advance, binders that have all the information in them, and then the schedule with how we intend to do the training. When will the anticipated uh, readiness of the two new members be in September? Would it be prior to our September meeting or afterwards? I'm not too sure when this. Right, out. I know we were we were looking at the they 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 put the city council scheduled their deadline for applications at the beginning of September and then they said without us realizing that they would wait to October to make their appointment. We've sent them a memo that will be I believe on their agenda this Thursday asking them to accelerate that and get their appointment made before the begin before your next meeting in September so that both members would be able to come in September and attend at the beginning of the of the training sessions the orientation sessions so we're doing our best to get it done by then but uh, you know we we are also advertising to, for the applications because we had um, three applications prior to the ordinance update since the ordinance update we haven't had any so we have been putting some um, ads out i believe on the police department crb link as well as on the clerk's office website to make sure that we get applicants to to submit applications we'll continue with uh, discussion any other suggestions as far as how to want to break up uh, these upcoming sessions i'd like to hear uh, from some of the other members as well I have a question, uh, Mr. Chair. How, how many, um, how many different areas or subjects do we have? There are multiple areas. So I believe we have at least six, six or seven areas. Um, but again, the depending on the topic, depends on how long the discussion will be. Some will be relatively quick, so we'll be able to combine those topics. But some will require some in-depth conversation. Are, are we set on doing it uh, in this forum or as Ms. Simmons suggested in a, in a workshop? I, I, I thought those workshops that we did with the, uh, with the survey were very effective. Well, the, the only thing 
uh, my concern is uh, some of our duties and responsibilities is also to educate the public. Uh, so I think this will be an education tool for us as well as being an educational tool uh, for the public, uh, knowing the in-depth uh, structure and things of that nature. I, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be good for them as well. Uh, so that's that's my opinion on it. I love the idea of you know allowing the public to be educated as we are getting educated as well. I don't want to see us have a situation where we have you know, three or four months where we haven't even heard a case and all we're doing is the education piece. So if there's a way that we can spend a portion of the meeting you know, getting up to speed on the ordinance and then maybe do one case, then I just want to make sure we don't look up and it's been literally a quarter and we haven't reviewed a case. If we have six topics to go through and some of them, as uh, Attorney uh, Pettis said, are pretty in-depth. So that would be my only feedback. And, and moving forward, as, as you mentioned, you'll be able to guide us in reference to the agenda and things of that nature on how to uh, place certain items to ensure that we're still serving uh, the public with our necessary duties and responsibilities as well. Yes, right. sir. Well, I, I would suggest that we do uh, no less than three of these, of these uh, information sessions uh, along with a case study. If, if, if possible, yes. Is this, is this a matter that we need to place into a vote? I, I would, um, Mr. Chair, I would appreciate if there could be a, a motion to um, direct the city attorney, you know, the legal staff to, um, you know, format the training session in a matter of three months along with, I believe, um, um, board member Simmons discussed that cases, active cases, I mean, cases, also are heard on the same agenda as well. If a motion could be drafted, I would appreciate that. And before, chair is open for a motion. And before we make a chair, the reason that might be good, if, uh, if you would make that motion and we second it, is we wanna make sure that we're allotting the kind of time for the new individuals because their question and understanding may be a little bit broader, uh, or the need may be greater than ours, simply because some of these areas, we kind of known about it. So the three would be so much better, and I agree. So if you make the motion, we'll certainly say. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dr. Collins. <laughs> okay, so I moved, I'm gonna try to combine with my comments along with uh, Mr. Tamayo. So my motion would be that we spread it out over three months and that we hear no more than three of the sections in, uh, uh, to get up to speed and educated on the ordinance and then we hear at least one case on the agenda in each of those three months. Hopefully, Clark got all that. And then uh, adding that, that subject to the, to the uh, uh, inclusion of the new board members. So it, it, it cannot start, the meter right. doesn't start running until we have our two new board members on board. Yeah, we would not want to start the educational process until our two members have, have joined us. That way we all learn at the same time. Second the motion with the two motion makers. Demetra Simmons has made a motion in reference to uh, spreading the three sections out over the next three months uh, subject to the new board members being present as well as at least uh, hearing one case on that agenda as well. Dr. Carolyn Collins has second the motion any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank that you, Mr. Chair. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. We will now continue uh, with the agenda under item F, uh, review of investigation. Uh, tonight, uh, we'll be reviewing case number 20F-146, turn of affairs investigation concerning violations of MOR number 1005, standard of conduct, also MOR number 1204.05, attendance to duty. 
and MOR number 1807, failure to comply with Department of Policies, to wit, use of force on details page. This investigation involved an incident on October 31st, 2020 at approximately 3.34 in Ybor City following an encounter with a citizen who verbally assaulted the officer while the officer was assisting in a search for a fleeing subject. This investigation determined the officer failed to properly document the event with the citizen and tonight presenting the case is Detective Jason DeGatney. Welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, the following investigation, uh, the formal investigation was generated as a result of an internal audit um, that was conducted by our body worn camera unit. On 10-31-2020, Officer Monteith was working a patrol assignment inside the Ybor City Historical District. That evening was particularly congested uh, with people due to them celebrating Halloween at the many local drinking establishments. Officer Monteith was assisting officers at 15th Street and 7th Avenue, attempting to locate a subject that fled from police. Citizen number one and citizen number two were at that location as well, conversing with another officer, attempting to report their vehicle missing. Monteith uh, mistakenly believed that citizen number two was associated with the person that fled from police. As officer Monteith was walking away, citizen number two called him a racist pig uh, and adding two expletives in there. Officer Monteith hears this turns around and approaches citizen number two to confront him. Officer Monteith, uh, citizen number one, uh, willfully and intentionally steps into the path of Officer Monteith, attempting to deflect him. Officer Monteith attempts to go around uh, that citizen uh, and he continues to move into his way. At that time, Officer Monteith redirects um, that citizen to confront the one that called him the name. Officer Monteith failed to document this incident uh, in any type of report. Additionally, Officer Monteith failed to conduct any de-escalation tactics uh, and the unprofessional demeanor which he displayed um, is contrary to the department's standard of conduct. Um, during this incident, Officer Monteith did fail to uh, activate his body-worn camera and that is in turn uh, backed up by the BWC uh, body-worn camera audit. Um, in conclusion, it was determined that uh, Monteith was in violation of MOR 1005, which is governing professional conduct. Therefore, that was sustained. Um, it was also concluded that Officer Monteith was in violation of MOR 1204, governing attentiveness to duty. Therefore, that was sustained as well. A new complaint was discovered during this investigation, um, and Monteith was subsequently found in violation of MOR 1807 which is a failure to comply with an SOP 5401.1, which outlines when a use of force details page must be initiated. That new complaint again was sustained. The violations that weren't sustained were SOP 538, which is a response to, to resistance due to the fact that citizen one continued to block the officer's, officer's path um, after the initial attempt to go around him. Uh, the citizen or the, the, the officer's use of force was deemed uh, reasonable use of force. The violation of SOP 609.9 .9, governing the body worn camera uh, that was uh, not sustained due to an audit report showing that Monteith's camera was low in battery. Additionally, it was discovered that he was attempting to preserve the battery life, uh, which is why he ended up turning it off. He still had a few hours left in his shift. Um, that camera was ultimately turned off and because he reasonably believed that that call was over. Um, Officer Monteith was in turn uh, issued a letter of counseling as a result. That was his discipline. Um, on a side note, um, Officer Monteith later met up with, these, with Citizen 1 and Citizen 2 and actually drove them around so they could locate their car, uh, which it, it, it was determined that they inadvertently forgot where they parked. A detective, did, uh, did Officer Tamayo. Monteith drive them around that evening? Yes, shortly after that incident. Any questions for our Detective Degadney? Uh, question.
question, uh, Detective. So yes, with regards to 6099, the body-worn uh, recording equipment, when I read the, the policy, it appeared that under paragraph 5 on the law enforcement activity, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty detailed. It lays out when you're supposed to, you know, turn on and off. Uh, and, but it, if I heard you correctly, it sounded like it was a little bit of discretion on the policeman's part. So the original call, um, which was uh, recorded, again, they were looking for uh, a suspect that had ran. So after the, the contact was over, again, he, his camera was off and he's walking away. And then as, the, as that, the, uh, the one citizen said that, he immediately turned around. Um, it was a matter of seconds um, and he did he failed to, do, to, to put it on at that time. But again, it was, it was just a matter of, of just about six or seven seconds is the uh, contact. On that same line, uh, in the standards for the body-worn camera, it says that when a, uh, prior to deactivating the device, the officer is supposed to report and ask them why they're deactivating it. And that doesn't appear to be done here. And what that is going down is the line that, that is correct. Um, I, I can't answer that question at the time. Captain, you know, by chance. If that was done. Uh, Captain Kevin Scummings with Professional Standards Bureau. With this particular case, I'm over the body one camera program. That's, that was my project to deploy it. They, their battery life, 10, 11 hours. He still had three hours left of his shift. And when it gets down around 7 or 8%, it starts to beep. And it tells them, hey, it's shutting down, or it's, it's close to shutting you down. Because I think around 3 or 4%, then it just automatically shuts down. He was trying to conserve it, so that's why the captain ruled that he didn't do that because it was shutting down. It was beeping, actively beeping. Because again, like the, uh, Detective DeGagney said, when they met up later in the night, his camera was dead. We try, we, when we issue those out, we issue a, B, a USB cable to them, and they can plug it into their uh, mobile uh, digital terminal, which is, but it doesn't work as well as, let's say, putting it in your dock at home or at the dock at the station. So they try to make it you know, go along. Uh, so that was the problem because the battery was low. And those batteries should last a 12-hour shift, but again, this was this was the 30th on on October, and it was it was a very busy night for those officers. So again, his his battery was diminishing very quickly. Dr. Collins, it was it clear, and I'm not sure was it clear in here that the officer it cut on, he cut it off. The, it did say something about the vehicle cut it on or something that it would engage it and he cut it off again and that's what I thought I saw these cutting on cutting off cutting on cutting off my biggest concern is I understand that he, I saw the 8% down to 5% and cut off I'm just really concerned if we actually had a problem that exists and that battery if he's cutting it off when it cutting on it might have been better to catch that at the 8% and then when it get down to two percent, whatever was happening, if something had happened, that's my my biggest concern with that. It, it seems like it all resolved, but I, that's helped me understand the cut on and off the, however the vehicle automatically cut it on itself. Yeah, with those body worn cameras, there's three ways that it turns on automatically. It's when an officer draws their weapon, when they take out their taser and they turn the taser on, and when they uh, in their police vehicles, when they move it to position one, there's three positions in the light bar. And what that does is that sends out a Bluetooth signal. Acts on set guarantees it'll go 35 feet, but on a clear night, it could go 60 feet. So that's the problem, especially in Ybor City when it's busy, officers are turning their lights on, and when your thing automatically comes on, it beeps. It tells you, you look down, there's a light, hey, it's recording. So if there's something, that's totally, he's not associated with, and it's a clear night, his camera could come on, and then they're allowed to obviously shut. That, they don't, it's called a non-event. They don't have to say why they're shutting it off. It just came on, and then the Axon audit trail, it'll say or read that, you know, signal act, they call it an Axon signal, signal activation, car or weapon or taser. So that, they're not required to uh, say why they shut it down when it's, turned on that way. And with those batteries, sometimes you don't know. It's like they operate, all it is pretty much is a cell phone on your chest uh, with, the, with the camera lens. And just like everybody I'm sure with the experience with their cell phones, sometimes it'll, you'll say 25% and it'll drop, all of a sudden you have none. 
So when it gets down, when it starts beeping, that's why it beeps is to warn you is, hey, the camera's getting low, and any lower it could shut down. Yeah, and, I, and I think an important thing to remember here is that the officer had no malicious intent at all um, of, of not deactivating or activating his camera during this incident. So it was not malicious in, in any way. I've got a question. Here. Hey. This, I just wanted to make sure the, the complaint was initiated by an internal audit, right? Not by a citizen. Yeah, it, yeah it's, it's, it wasn't by these citizens at all. It was by our body more camera unit. Okay. Uh, which we conduct at the body more cameras under Captain School Meesters. They conduct, uh, there's two detectives, and they do audits every month of uh, like 100 different videos each uh, for that detective. And their job is to kind of locate just something like this, of course, that, that, that we would have to investigate. So we, we do a pretty good job of like, internally, internally auditing our, ourselves uh, in finding. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tamayo. In the in the course of that audit, then Officer Monteith admitted to what had happened. Yes, he, he, he we conducted an interview with him. He basically explained everything uh, the best that he could. And again, he he was he was negligent when he did not write the report. Um, I mean, and, and he was the the use of or the uh, the letter of counseling educated him on that and the importance on de of documenting exactly and and, uh, and de-escalating situations like that. And what was the incident that Officer Monteith and the other officers were originally responding to? There was a someone that the suspect on foot. What, what was the actual incident? It was what a was resist it? without violence. So it was it was an incident that happened inside of the war. Um, and then once the officers went to engage, they had a probable cause, and he the, the suspect fled. Yet ultimately, the suspect got away. Um, but yeah, so the that was the original call. But, you know, the, the record should show, though, that the Officer Monteith showed a great deal of restraint and cooperation with someone who had treated him pretty poorly, not even minutes before, and calling him a racist pig and getting, getting in his face. And I just think the officer showed a great deal of restraint and cooperation in actually assisting this individual and another individual soon after that confrontation. Also, I had, uh, Mr. Mount, you weren't here last meeting. Is we I went over our quality assurance. That's something also that we do. Uh, report we audit 13 categories of the police department to pretty much say we're doing what we're doing what we're saying we're doing. And that's one of the categories is on there is the body worn camera review. And uh, just like the, uh, Detective DeGagney said, there's two detectives that look. And in addition to just us looking, each sergeant or supervisor is required to. Uh, look at cameras of their officers and also if they have any complaints or at a certain level of force they're also required to look at the camera. That's a good good standard operating procedure. Thank you. In, any other uh, further questions for Detective DeGatney? The only question I have that's why I had asked for this and thank you whoever put it up here for me thank yes. you but that's why I'd asked for this because I was trying to see how long it did indicate and I want to see how long did his camera last after that event and I agree for him to be supportive and have carried someone, but that de-escalation uh, at the beginning of that, he looked like he was kind of at a point where he should have been de-escalated, and it seems like one of them was de-escalated. So the fact that you did him a letter, uh, that was good, but this kind of looked like that camera lasts quite a bit after that, so I was concerned about that. I'm concerned about anybody turning the camera off. Okay. Thank you, and, and again, uh, that was one of the reasons why I selected this particular case, uh, to educate our viewers at home, and we can get as much knowledgeable as possible with the body worn cameras. It is, it is new technology, and it's something that we need to get accustomed to. So again, thank you. Any other further questions? Hearing none, the, the question before the board is whether we concur or not concur or unable to reach a determination that the disposition, investigation, and its findings were consistent with department policy and procedures. And without any further discussion, can I have a motion? I move concurrence. Reverend Banks has made a motion to concur. Ms. Simmons has seconded the motion. Any further discussion? We now continue. Excuse me. That was <laughs> we sound alike. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> so again, Board Member Reverend Banks had made the motion to concur, and uh, Mr. Reyes has second uh, the motion. <laughs> it was Reyes, correct? No. No, it was Blair. Mr. Blair. Mr. Blair. I know. It's, it's, it's four down. Board Member Stephen gallery. Blair has <laughs> second the motion. We're going to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> we will now continue with the vote. All in favor, specify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, state by saying no. The motion passes. Thank you. Yes. We'll continue with the agenda under item H, number three, orientation discussion, CRB staff reports. Did we conclude all items under H? We did not. G. But we had started. No, we still don't. We still got G. Yeah, I know we move things around. So, just uh, yeah. I think we want to do. Okay. Yes. Let's continue with the agenda under item G: Community and Tampa Police Department matters. <laughs> Report by Lieutenant Kimberly Hill on Tampa Police interview panel and discussion on implementation. And one. Thank you. Apologize. Where's, where's the follow-up from the case last week? I was going to bring that up on the whole business. Okay, yeah. I'll let it go. I got you, Dr. Got you. Okay. I haven't forgotten. All right. <laughs> go along. If you will, Lieutenant Hill, please continue. Very well. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. So I'm here tonight to talk to you a little bit about the police department's new panel interview, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'll briefly go over the books that you were provided with, along with an overview of our hiring process and what you should expect being a member of the police department's panel interview. So in the book that each of you have, um, there's a flow chart, and the flow chart explains our hiring process step by step. There's also a confidentiality agreement, which all of the panel members will have to sign before they serve. And then the guidelines for the current panel, which will be updated and provided uh, once we set the new date and time for the interviews. So the form also includes instructions for the interview and questions that will be asked. They should be at the bottom of that page. And then the hiring standards, which we're currently revising, but we'll provide them to you as soon as they're complete. And that's just to really give you an idea of the policies and procedures that we go by that govern our hiring process. So with the hiring process, you have the flow chart. And in addition to that, we typically hire three times a year. It's usually two certified and one police recruit class. And each class ranges anywhere from 15 to 30 officers. It just really depends on our vacancies at the time. So previously, once we complete the background on each applicant, we would bring it to the chief for approval. So now that we've added the interview panel prior to going to the chief for selections, once we bring it to the chief now, he will get to go through the books and see each of your recommendations on whether or not you concur, or whoever's sitting in on the panel, whether or not you concur with us hiring that applicant. So what does this mean for you? We would meet at least three times a year for each new hire class. Each interview panel would last between one to three days, just depending on the number of applicants that we would have to interview. We'll try to get you the exact dates of when we would do the interviews at least two months prior to the actual interview panel taking place. 
and then we'll provide you with the background information on each applicant at least one week prior to the start of the interview. So if we have 20 interviews, you would have to go through and review each panel. Um, so if it took like 15 minutes, 30 applicants would be about a full day, eight hours. But I'm going to defer to Dr. Collins. Do you remember about how long it took you for this last group to review each applicant? <laughs> for me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I think it was a little bit, some 45 minutes for each applicant. And, and to say it to you, the, the application process when you receive them in three parts. And as I was talking with them yesterday, one part is the city piece, one is your piece, and then the other one is the summary. And so if I saw something that didn't match and it was the first time, then I had to kind of marry it. So yes, it took me about 45 minutes. Uh, at best to review one, but I think uh, with this next section, when I do it in detail, I'll probably mm -hmm. be able to do it less because you guys said a couple of things. So okay, I'll and be then we'll be a little bit more intelligent after this week. No, you're fine, and I understand. I think we briefly talked about it, like the not matching. The city application may ask for your job history for the last X amount of years, but then we ask your job history for a different amount of years. So then some of the jobs aren't right or weren't added to the original one. And the same with education. The city application asks it a little differently. So one person might say they have a degree, whereas on ours we see they only you know, have 100 credit hours. So I am going to get with um, the personnel unit. We'll try to come up with a better summary so you're not having to piece things together going forward. Um, so speaking of the personnel unit, so we'll provide you with the personnel sergeant's contact information in case you have any questions while you're reviewing that, which is Sergeant um, Michelle DeSmith. She's here tonight. She's in the back of the room along with um, the major of support services division which is Anna Richardson Griffin. So not only will we give you her contact information in case you have questions going along but also which we didn't get the opportunity unfortunately to do this go around of Dr. Collins but we would like you to come in an hour before the interview starts that way if you have any questions leading up to the actual interviews we can kind of walk through any questions you have ahead of time. So in t the total amount estimated for each turn you serve on the interview panel would be approximately two to four days for the review of the applicants and the interview. And as far as the selection of which board member would participate in the panel interview, I think, Mr. Schmidt, do you have a form? So there's going to be a form that's passed around tonight. And if you would like to volunteer, perfect, that form. If you'd like to volunteer, you can go ahead and sign the form. Once we have a list of people that can participate, what we'll do is when we have the next dates finalized, we'll start at the top and we'll call each member. We'll tell you the dates. If those dates work for you and you're able to serve, perfect. If not, we'll go down to the next um, board member until we find one that the dates work. So do you guys have any questions for me about the process? Yes, ma'am. Should we complete the confidentiality agreement in advance of signing up that way if we can? Or we no, ma'am. Just in case the dates don't work for okay. you, okay. that way we'll send it to you. Once we determine you're the one that's going to serve during the next panel, we'll go ahead and email it to you, and then you can sign it and just bring it with you. It's fine. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, we're excited. We had our first interview on Monday with Dr. Collins, so I'm sure she can fill you guys in. And we will see you tomorrow for the rest of them. So if there's no further questions, that's all. But I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you Thank for speaking you. with us tonight. And I will, I will continue to pass this uh, sign-up sheet uh, along. And I, I encourage everyone to uh, get involved and uh, you know, take advantage of the new ordinance. Thank you. The next agenda item is a continuation of the CRB staff reports or business. Are there any CRB staff reports uh, from the attorney uh, for the board? or the attorney for TPD, or from the coordinator, Captain Schoolmeister. Kamaria pettis Mackle from the city attorney's office. There, Mr. Chair, there are no additional reports. Thank you.
Is there any new business or announcements? Can we go to old business before we get to new business? It's not on Okay. Yeah. Let's continue with any old business. Mr. Chair, um, during last month's meeting uh, for case 20F-148, we had asked for some discipline stats as it related to B12 violations. So, I mean, it's okay if they didn't bring them tonight, but can we get an estimated time frame? Can we expect to get those at next month's meeting or the meeting thereafter? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Kamaria pettis Malcolm from the City Attorney's Office. Um, in regards to the item that um, Commissioner Simmons is just asking additional information on, that item is still under pending litigation. And, and per your rules, uh, policies, and procedures, uh, particularly um, in reference to subsection, I just, uh, subsection I, CRB members shall avoid discussion of matters at a public meeting where the Tampa Police Department or the City of Tampa are, are or are likely to be a party in litigation. Um, and because that matter is still pending, I'd ask that we not, the city not provide any additional information at this time regarding that item. Oh, thank you. We were not made aware of that, so I appreciate that. No problem. And, and if possible, we can receive notification uh, once it is resolved that we can receive that material? The material that you're asking for, you wanna receive it after it's concluded? Yes. If that's a, if at that time, once it's concluded, it's still a matter that uh, the board considers uh, of importance, then I would certainly, at that appropriate time, ask for a motion to be uh, made to bring that item. Um, and, and Mr. Chair, you and I can discuss you know, during our standing meeting that we'll hopefully set soon about, you know, how new items can be put on the agenda. But um, but uh, until that matter is concluded, I'd ask that the board not address that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I, I did Ms. have Simmons. a follow-up question. Okay. Being that there's open litigation, I'm curious how the case got brought to us last month. Because I thought we were only supposed to see cases that were closed. And I'm just... I'm curious how, how that got out of order, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I, I, I'm, I know you do. <laughs> I can't answer that, that question, but I can, uh, whatever happened regarding how that item got to the agenda, um, it cannot be discussed because there's pending litigation. Gotcha. But I, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Okay. And, and my follow-up to that is, I understand but it was bought, we know how it got to us in a way because they bought it to us and put it on and wanted us to take a look at it. So only because of that, we're fine not addressing it anymore since it, it, we're fine with that. But once it's over, because it did come to us and there was some germane information that was in there that we asked for the stats on, once it's over with, Rather than questioning the board, and we've requested, we would ask that that information be brought back to us when it's safe, when it's complete, and it's no longer being investigated. We would like to see those findings. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. And that would conclude uh, any old business or new business under uh, staff reports and business. As you're aware, the board is typically scheduled to meet on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, September 28th, 2021 at 6 p.m. However, uh, City Council has a meeting beginning at 5 p.m. And we will need to discuss setting uh, this meeting for either another date uh, when the chambers are available. Uh, open that discussion. Before after. I was just saying, how about the Tuesday before or after? I'm not too sure. That's the 21st. Yes. yes. That works for me. Do, do we have an availability uh, schedule in, in reference to the chambers? So we can look at real dates. 
Yes, the 21st is available. I was going to ask, and I'm sorry, Kamari Pettis Mackle, for the record, I was going to ask Madam Clerk to just confirm the availability of the chambers. Any further discussion on the next scheduled meeting being scheduled on the 21st of September instead of the 28th due to availability? Board members, for any reason are you unable to attend uh, the next meeting, please notify our clerk, uh, Ms. Mercer, at least 48 hours in advance so we can ensure a voting form. Before I adjourn this meeting, I'd like to give any of our board members the opportunity to add uh, any final comments or statements at this time. If I may. Mr. Tamayo. Uh, Captain Schoolmeasters, I d d would not expect that you would, uh, that you would know uh, this, this answer, but uh, with the, uh, with the uh, spike in, uh, in COVID cases, uh, any issues at all with TPD with, uh, with coverage? Staffing shortages, coverage? No, we have uh, average, for the Captain Schoolmeasters with PSB, we have act, uh, adequate coverage, but yes, we some officers have. I don't know the exact stats of them, but But yes. it, has, it has not impacted our Correct. ability and, to cover. And, and, and a majority of those, or a lot of those, have been uh, vaccinated as well. Okay. So, yes, it is. Uh, I know I worked a recent football game, and a couple people couldn't work that night because they tested positive. But it's not impacting our readiness or our, you know, manpower on the streets. Uh, but it, we're probably like, just like any other organization, it's, it is affecting us too. Yeah. We're certainly seeing it in, in the schools as well. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chair? Yes. Kamaria pettis Michael from the City Attorney's Office. Um, I'd please ask the members if someone could please, regarding your meeting date for September 21st, can we please have a motion um, and, a, and a second regarding whether or not um, you're going to do a meeting on September 21st at 6 p.m. Second. Second. Blair. <laughs> I, 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 I heard the motion. I wasn't quite sure. So, thank you. Stephen Blair has made the motion uh, to uh, schedule our next upcoming meeting on Tuesday, September 21st. Uh, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, Ms. Simmons has second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All in favor, say so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, state by saying nay. The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any further comments, questions from any of our board members before we adjourn? I also would like to add that the public is welcome and is encouraged uh, to attend our next scheduled meeting. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. This meeting is now adjourned. That's right. called the cantonment.